right, everybody. Welcome back to Definitely Not Developer Commentary. My name is Mike Stout. I am Tony Garcia. And we're back, Tony. We're back doing After a bit recording. of a hiatus due to life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, moving sucks. Yeah, I can imagine. I also had a big move recently, and it was not, you know, it wasn't the worst move I've ever had, but... You know, even not the worst move is never good. Yeah. The best move I've ever had was still terrible. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. So I'm, I'm settling in now. It's good. I'm a little closer. It's easier to come yeah. uh, do recording, so that'll be fun. Uh, and I have no idea what we were doing. Uh, uh, I know we just met the, the, uh, the fixer. The fixer, right. Yes. Okay, and, so we uh, were leaving here. So we were about to leave here and, uh, and get moving on to our next planet. All right. What what's our uh, what settings are we on? What what graphical settings? Oh, that's a good question. So let's see. We're on fidelity mode. So why don't we do performance ray tracing? Yeah, I think everybody seemed to be like that's what everybody seemed to, the consensus seems to be what everybody wants to be. Yeah. Uh, at least at least that's where I want to be, and that's the important thing, right? Yeah. Is, is that I'm happy. Uh, yeah, so let's go. I think we're probably getting close to where you left off. Yep. So I imagine the controller is going to go back into your hands not long. Couple levels, maybe? Yeah, so people yeah. should appreciate good gameplay while they can still get it, because it's it's about to go downhill. <laughs> yeah, you, you, uh, uh, please let us know if you don't want to see me play the game, because uh, I don't want to see it. All right, uh, what do we got left? Uh, so, forging the Dimensionator. So we're going to go forge yeah. the Dimensionator. Okay, forge it. That ratchet's got everything what, handled right what now. What planet was this? So are we going back to the arena planet? No, I, we'll find I think this is a new planet. It's a space station. Nope, just the station. This is an ocean. Pretty cool, right? And just think, once we forge this thing and save the dimension, you'll have a whole universe to explore. How are you not afraid of the future? With all of its unknowns. I do get, uh... You asked me on Savali if I wanted to find my family. For a long time, I did. I mean, I really did, but the closer I got to doing that, what if they're not what I expected? What if I'm not what they expected? I just... Anyways, I think we're here. Kadaro Station houses the Emperor's most All secret right. research. Kadaro Station. Only beyond Forge strong enough to build the Dimensionator. So it's our I don't see him. This is Zircon anywhere. No. So look, while we're just sort of exploring around, I wanted to get one of your. Uh, oh, these. Is, I'm already in combat. These guys don't look like enemies, but uh. It's their friendly expressions. Yeah. It's just they 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 look trustworthy by design. So that if you see one uh, walking in the street, you can be like, hello, robot, I need help, and then they melt you. Yeah. I wanted to get one of your opinion, uh, your opinion on one of the things I saw called out in uh, the reviews. For this game. For this game. Uh, I, I know we're well behind the curve, so it's, it's weird to be talking about the reviews. <laughs> uh, but one of the things I saw that was uh, an interesting criticism that I saw that I don't even necessarily agree with was... Um, the complaint that there was no difference really at all between Rivet and Ratchet. That, you know, the weapons carried across between both of them. They both had exactly the same move set. Like, you know, it, it was a skin change for the most part when you're playing as Rivet versus when you're playing as Ratchet, right? It's a, it's for the story, but gameplay wise, there's no real significant difference. I just wanted to see if you had any thoughts about, yeah. you know, maybe designing a game like that. What might challenges might come up, advantages, pros, cons, all that kind of thing. So the first thing I think about is like, what, what, what are we looking for with this feature? Right? Like, how does it serve the creative agenda? Right? Like, what are we trying to do with this game? And does having 
two different characters that have two different sets of abilities make sense for what we're trying to do, or is it like, like it could be a distraction, right? Like, uh, like if you think about, uh, if you think about Ratchet and Clank, right? There's a thing that you like doing when you're playing a Ratchet and Clank game. Yeah. And that thing, uh, like, you know, we, we tried a lot of the time to, to change up what that thing feels like, and then it stops feeling like a Ratchet and Clank. Uh huh. You know, like whenever we would try to um, to do experiments with weapons that didn't just do damage, uh -huh. right? Uh, we we could we could have them. They might even be fun, but they didn't necessarily feel like what what we were looking for in a Ratchet game. But also from a creative perspective, right? Like, I don't want to make the game not feel like Ratchet, and I don't want the things we're adding to the game to not feel like Ratchet, right? Like, you, you want to keep... Does, does that make sense? Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so that's part of it. Then there's another part of it where, like, uh, um, we're, we're tailoring every part of every level to the character's metrics. So how far do they jump? How high do they jump? Right, how far can they... Uh, uh, how fast can they go? That sort of thing. Uh, and having two sets of those things makes your level design problems like more than twice as hard right because uh, if you don't ask different questions in the level design there's no point in having the character be different and if you you know if you don't have the character be different enough that it requires you to do different level design then why do it in the first place right uh, and I think that's probably another reason here uh, right is uh, it does kind of dilute from the the questions you can ask in a given level. Right. Uh, now, in the case of uh, uh, like I brought up Mario Two as an example. Uh huh. Uh, you know, Princess versus Toad versus Luigi versus Mario. Yeah. Uh, right. Where uh, they did make a bunch of different heroes that could all go through the, right. uh, the levels, but the there's two things there, which is sort of hinging on something I was pointing out, which was, uh, for one thing, the what a Mario game is from a level design perspective, at least, it's very different than what, uh, you know, say a Donkey Kong level would be, right? Right. They have, uh, uh, in terms of the amount of space that is used and how that space is used for jumping, it's all apportioned differently, and like the. The, the, so when you have a Mario level, right, you can, you, they, they decided to design that entire game so that you can use whichever character you wanted. And the difficulty came more from, uh, like, the character you were choosing versus the kinds of things you were doing in the level than, like, the specific level having, like, really tricky platforming to do. Right. Uh, so it was usually, like, um, uh, where something like Donkey Kong, right? They, uh, you know, in the early Donkey Kong games, they would have a, a say Diddy, but Diddy would play uh, not that differently from Donkey right. Kong. Right. There were like a few. Was, the differences were fairly minor. Yeah, and, like and different hitboxes, things like that. Yeah, and with to you know, with uh, uh, Toad versus Mario versus Peach, they were different, but only in like very controllable ways, like what their what their jumps and hang times were like. Uh, how big they were and like how fast they could pick stuff up. It was all stuff that was only, you know, um, that they could accommodate for, but that in a, uh, in a, like in a different kind of game, does that, does that make sense sort of what I'm saying? Like yeah. the, it, depending on what game you're making and what your agenda is for that game and kind of like how you want it to feel you would make different concessions as to whether you'd want other characters. Uh, so yeah, so you got like creative agenda reasons and you've got um, budget reasons, right? Like it is expensive to do it right. And if you're not gonna do it right, then why do it? Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't know, I feel like I went on a little long about that, but. Well, I, I, I wanna bring something back uh, just in the context of Crash that you were talking about. And I think Crash is a particularly interesting example just because I know one of the reasons Crash, one of the things that makes that 
really resonates with the fans of Crash that I think we've talked about previously is that the difficulty is a uh, is a pretty big part of Crash. Like yeah. it's supposed to be challenging and it's supposed to be difficult for the player. Yeah. And I think one of the things that's fairly really interesting about that is that you uh, this you brought it back about making sure keep keeping the platforming focused and all that kind of stuff is that when you have two characters that really have one move set it allows you to be certain that the player is learning the mechanics and then you can start to push them as the game goes on yeah whereas you if you have more and more mechanics it limits your ability to push them later on because you're giving the players so much to learn that there's only so far that they can really take it if you keep those mechanics tight you can really start to push it and make it so they have to really perfect that small move set rather than giving them a large move set which that they're only kind of you yeah. know uh, so when you're making a game that is very much about difficulty and challenge keeping that move set tight and keeping the things that the player has to learn r- limited oddly enough gives you more ability it's a, it's a depth versus breadth situation yeah. right it it's uh like, um, so, so if I'm designing a level, uh, the first thing I'm considering is what, what can the hero character do? Like, what are its metrics? How far can it go? Um, I'm talking just about platformer levels. Uh, what I'm trying to come up with when I'm analyzing the character in, in that way is like, uh, so let's say, uh, you know, Ratchet can do that wall run, right? I know that. That becomes one of the questions I can start asking in the level design. Uh, you know, I know how far Ratchet can glide, I know how high he can go, uh, and so I can start chaining these things together. Uh, first we had you, you know, uh, we saw you run on one of those uh, wall runs, then it was a wall run with a swing shot, right? Right. So you're taking the different elements and overlapping them in such a way as to get, uh, uh, you know, asking the player more and more complex questions as you go on in the level. Yeezy! Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I thought you were someone else, but uh, you're not. <laughs> is he okay? I'm Ratchet. Oh, that is great. Hello, Ratchet. Were you looking for me? That would be great, too. Ooh, can I call you Chet? No. And no. <laughs> I'm uh, looking for some Blizzon. Oh, I know just the place, but I lost my access arm in all of this water. Have to drain it, but how, Ratch? How? Calm down. I'll handle it. And the the other thing I wanted to point out, which is sort of a deviation, but like even even making a character like in the case of Ra- uh, Rivet or uh, Coco, that that acts the same uh, is is still very difficult to do. Uh huh. Because uh, you. You have another character that has different animations and different personality, and like you have to get all of that to feel exactly right and the same without changing the metrics. You know, uh, Rivet and Ratchet have to go the same height uh, when they jump, or they have to glide. You know, uh, all of that information needs to be known, uh, and they have to do it equally but with say different animations or a different skeleton or right because they they move differently they they fire the weapons differently right there's like um right and i i guess that well that is one point i do want to over that i i i might have glossed over when i was that even having two characters that have the same move set is still a lot of work yeah a massive yeah. amount of work uh it's just it, it's kind of a creative decision right uh and if you decide to do it, there are definitely ways to design the levels to do it, but it requires you to do it differently. So the if you decide we're having different characters, then you're deciding that, okay, the way that this is going to be different is what I want, uh-huh. right? But if you don't want that, you don't want to have the different characters. Right. Uh, so it, it comes down to like, oh, creepy. It comes down to like what... Uh, what is it that we want from this game? What do we want to uh, to show people? Uh, and uh, in in both cases, in this and in the case of Crash, like uh, you, we we I, I feel like it was the right creative decision uh, 
just because what we wanted to focus the game on was something different than that. Uh -huh. uh, that if that makes sense. Like, some kind of like in, in, in Crash's case, we, we took all of our alternate players and gave them their own levels so that they could, uh, you know, we, we, we knew their metrics and we could design questions into the level design and advance those questions because we knew what that character could do that was different than all the other characters. What is that? That is Juice, my best friend. He tries to kill me sometimes, but he is a great listener. He tries to kill you? Did you become friends too? Uh, you can call him Juicy. And uh, or, or, like that gets, or, when you want to have two characters with radically different move sets moving in the same environments, that's where it gets tricky because you have two whole sets of questions you can ask the player, but you will have to ask them in such a way that both players can solve them and it still feels different. Right. Uh, so that's just like another, it's another thing you have to take into account when you're designing everything. It's not just like I could go in and make something with different, uh, uh, make a character with a totally different move set and expect it to work in a level that wasn't uh, set up that way. Right. I, I, I think that's actually an interesting thing. Like, let's, let's imagine a slightly different Ratchet and Clank game where instead of, like, having the levels where it decides for you based on the story whether this is a Ratchet level or it's a Rivet level, and we give the full control to the player, and you can decide whether you want to do Ratchet or whether you want to do Rivet, and let's just say that they have a different moveset in this sort of scenario. If you go into a level as Rivet, and there's nothing there special for you to do with her unique moveset, you're going to feel kind of let down by it. Like, Same with Ratchet, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and to your point, it's like it's not enough to just have them be there. You have to have moments all the time that emphasize, like, oh, you can use their special thing here and make your choice matter, right? right. I think it, it's... I think we've had this discussion a couple times. I don't know if we've had it on the on the show or not, but it's not enough to have choice. The choice has to have some significance. Otherwise, right. it's pointless. Right. right. Yeah. If it's just uh, do I go do I go left or do I go right, and they're both very, you know pretty much the same thing, then why didn't why why did I put that choice there? Right. Uh, whereas like. Um, think of a game that does it really well like well, l l take an easy one let's just say chess right uh like they they've uh, uh actually i just lost my train of thought what were what were we talking about talking about making choices matter and not just having binary left right choices and making them actually be significant that's choices. right you have to yeah. you have to pay off all of that and right. uh it's possible but it changes what you can do you know like and it it changes the game like what the what the game feels like so like let's say um you know uh you, this hypothetical ratchet game right you had ratchet and you had another character that was sneaky you know like sly uh actually let's just use that as an example say they had a crossover with ratchet sly and ratchet sly. yeah and spyro why the hell not uh <laughs> and uh they because they all have very different things that they do mm -hmm. spyro is like it's like driving a car right more than uh, uh sly which is more like moving slowly across very deliberately placed uh hazards and obstacles compared with ratchet right which is a lot about enemies and cover and uh uh like what you can see from any given camera view uh it's more open right like um uh, but uh but it's not as open as you would need for Spyro, right? Because he drives around like a car. Uh, but the the difference between those three characters is enough that when you're playing any one of them, you would feel like, oh, okay, this this character is a very different experience from those other characters. But then somehow you would need to design a level that was narrow enough for Sly Cooper, uh, wide enough for Spyro and still had enough choke points for Ratchet, right? And without just designing three different levels in the same level, 
it become you, you start running very thin on what you can do because Ratchet's going to have to cover the same distances that Spyro did, and so is Sly. Uh, whereas Spyro's going to have to get across all the gaps that Sly can can walk, you know, on tiptoes across, right? So it's um, it's not that that's impossible. It's just that it's very difficult, and right. it becomes I... the sole thing that that game is going to be about. That's playful? Usually he just moseys around the station doing his own thing, but he seems to be actively chasing you. <laughs> I am jealous. There it is! My favorite Blizzon in all of the station! The, in, the, in the case of this game, I think that their uh, uh, motivation was probably born out of one of the things you're talking about, right? Which was, it's really hard to make uh, uh, two different characters. I also think but also to the, to the to that point is like if you're if you're doing this kind of thing the reality is you're going to have less planets on a game like that, right? Cuz you'll probably have the same if if you're even if you're going for the same number of hours of gameplay, which is a, a weird metric, but let's just use that as the metric. In this hypothetical crossover game, you might have 10 planets to do that 40 hours because they have to account for so many characters versus one character which might be 20 planets right, right. yeah yeah and I, I i i guess and to your point to just to get to it is like you have to make that decision of what kind of game is it and ratchet is very much a game about planet hopping yeah and being able to have a lot of those planets is pretty important to what makes a ratchet game yeah um and the the tight linear progression of combat setups is very important for Ratchet, right? But like in, in Spyro's case, the combat setups are way more widely spaced and about different things. Uh, so you, uh, even, even if you could create a level that would be really fun for all three of them, you would still have spent three times as long or more on that one level, probably more, uh, because it's it, it is m much more difficult to to do that right. Uh, but you know, and let's say you had two characters that were only slightly different, right? Like let's say their double jumps worked a little differently, or uh, one of them was faster than the other one. That's still the same problem, because if one of them's a little faster than the other one they get through the level faster. They right. Could, they could run past enemy setups. They could do, you know, uh, and then at the end of the day, you would still need to make the level small enough so that the slower character could can get to the end in a reasonable amount of time. If they had different types of double jumps, you would have to make sure that there was a way for both characters to get past all of the, the things. And so even like the small differences, you got to make a lot of changes to what the game is to support and the bigger the the smaller the differences, the less worthwhile it is to even have the differences. Right. Uh, because like the more similar they are, the more you wonder, well, why weren't they both? Why didn't we just make them both the same? Uh, so it's a it's a it's a it's a push and pull between what is it that we want to accomplish? How do we want the game to feel? And like the the getting that feeling of different play, playing different characters. That's sort of like what a game like you're making a game for a bunch of different characters that's your big core innovation at that point you know is that you have all those characters you're not also going to be doing something like crazy riffs you know like that's your big right that's your big thing i i, I think you brought up a very interesting point there and i, I we might I, this might feel like retreading but i do think it's an interesting thing that you put out mm -hmm. there is that uh, it's not enough to just have small differences, and I think it's very easy to make the to make the what sounds like reasonable criticisms like, oh, it'd be nice if they were at least slightly different. And I think the point, the good point you made is like, it's not enough for them to be slightly different. Like yeah. if they're just slightly different, you're adding all this extra work that doesn't actually add any value to it, right? Yep. Like 
it may sound like a very reasonable thing to say, like, oh, it would be nice if they were slightly different. And like, I can understand why you would think that, but in reality, them being slightly different would in many ways just be more disappointing. Because they're just like, oh, they're only slightly different, right? Yeah, yeah. like the, uh, e let's say they were only slightly different in ways that didn't make them confusing, like it didn't throw your muscle memory off. You would still have to pay those things off in the levels or... Uh, You'd be wondering why they were even slightly different. Exactly. Yeah. And then since you would have to accommodate both types of movement in the level, that would make them feel even less different. Right. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, rocket fuel, right? The, the, the heavier the rocket, the more fuel you need, but the more fuel you have, the, the heavier yeah, the rocket Right, gets. right, right. It's, and at some point, you have, to reach a, you have to reach an equilibrium between the fuel and the rocket, you know. Uh, and that's sort of what we're talking about is, like, it's not just should, should they have made... Uh, rivet different like that that's one answer that you could give right that could they have yes but that would it would have been a different very different game and probably a lot more focused on on that aspect and I think if you really wanted something like that it's fair to fair to say oh I I wish this game had been that way right but it's pretty clearly not the game they were they were going for yeah you know? the, dis the discussion at that point is really i wish this was a different game <laughs> rather than oh i wish this was a feature that was in this game and maybe that, that is because that, that's not a feature that's what you build the game around right right yeah a creative agenda more than uh more than a specific feature right and i can understand people being disappointed that it, it wasn't the, the the creative agenda wasn't the one that they wanted right but generally when i'm talking about where a game succeeds or fails, I'm talking about it in the context of its own, or at least what I could tell about its creative agenda. Like, were they, were they going for this, right? And how, how, how well did they achieve it? And, uh, but I think it's, it's fair to say, you know, I, w I think I would have liked this better if it had a different creative agenda. But it, at that point, you're not just talking about a feature, you're talking about building a different game. Right. Know? And you're not really talking about the game on its own merits at that point. You're kind of like, oh, I just, if this game was a different game, I might have liked it more, which is kind of like, it's hard to argue at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you know, it's a personal taste thing at that point, and that's cool. Right. Right. Uh, but what I think what we're talking about is more like, um, what would the game had to have been like in order for them to have made it different? Uh, and that's not always something that's obvious when you think about you know, well, what what would it be like if they were different? And w when we were just talking about, like, even changing small things, like, if you're only changing small things, then why do it? Right. And uh, if, uh, if you're changing something big enough that it matters, then it's not a small thing anymore. It becomes a huge right. endeavor. Uh, and I think, and, and I think, especially whenever you're dealing with something like the main character, Oof, yeah. the the implications are huge. Like changing an enemy in a level can still be a major decision, but it's reined in to the places where that enemy exists. Right? Yes. It's yeah. an isolated change. Anything that involves the main character, by definition, will affect the entirety of your game. Yeah. Right, yeah. so anything involving the main character has to be well thought out in terms of like, where is this gonna, what's the impact of this really going to be? Yeah, and to a large extent, when it comes to a video game, like your main character is your game. Right. Like it's, it's the way in which the player interacts with the world and, and the questions that are being asked by the levels. Uh, so to you know, it is a huge part, if not like most of what your game is, and so you need to be very clear on what your agenda with your hero characters is, uh, and it can't just it can't just be like okay, we want to do all of this cool stuff, and then also we'll have two different characters, because the also will have two different characters is it, it changes ha you know half of what your game is. Uh, so it's a big it's a big. Uh, it's a bigger deal than it seems like, I think, from, from just thinking about it. Right. Uh, I, I had a junior designer once uh, who uh, 
brought up the idea, like, why don't we make this a co-op game? And I was trying to explain this this very <laughs> thing. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, like, he, he was like, okay, well, what if we just, like, uh, you know, he kept s suggesting solutions to it. And I kind of used that as the, the thing where I was just like, okay, think of all of this stuff now that we're talking about doing, right? And now we have to bring all of that stuff up to a shippable level of quality. Right. Right. And it, it sort of gets the point across, but you have to be able to think, uh, uh, you have to be able to think forward like that, right? Which comes with experience and, you know, uh, having made a bunch of games. Well, I think one of the things that's interesting about it is seeing it in the context of Ratchet and Clank. It's oddly a sort of compliment that people are w are wishing that Riven and Ratchet were slightly different. And I'll say that in this way. And I, I, when I say these things, I hope I'm not speaking out of... I, I hope they don't come across as digs because this is not how I intend it. Um, but if I'm wrong, then maybe... Then, uh, then I apologize in advance. But like something like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, they give you the option to play between male and female characters. But at the same time, they design their character, their main characters, to mostly be a bit of a blank slate. Mm -hmm. um, and so the choice between a male and female character in something like Assassin's Creed is very much just a choice of aesthetics. So you just choose the avatar, and that's the avatar that you're going to play with. And nobody really complains. Nobody really says, oh, I wish that the female main character in Assassin's Creed had a different moveset than the male main character in Assassin's Creed. Because everybody just knows that this is just a skin change, right? That it's a blank slate character. Mm -hmm. I think it's because there's so much personality imbued in Ratchet and Rivet, and they are so written to be different characters. You want them, you want that difference in the writing to be reflected in the gameplay, right? The fact that they have full personalities and are actually very different characters yeah. creates the desire to want to see that reflected in the gameplay, which I completely understand but it's not that simple. And that's kind of why I say it's a bit of a compliment is that when you write characters that people resonate with, you want that leads to this desire to see that reflected in all aspects of the game. Right. And that's in many ways a mark of success on how well they wrote the characters and made them actually feel like different characters. Yeah, I think that... Uh, uh it's you know when when it comes to uh, uh, platformers too, like what what the character does and how they move is like a fundamental. It's the fundamental way you you interact with the game. Uh, so I can see how in a platformer, you might even be more likely to want two characters to move differently, because it's the entirety of the way that you interact with everything right uh so that makes a lot of sense to me you know even just from the genre's perspective i love these little side levels these are all these are always really good okay what are you doing do those little orange things turn into and i mean that looks like a swing shot target over there so i think that's where i'm going but yeah what do these things do oh maybe you have to hit them with uh yeah, yeah maybe i gotta shoot them or something Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I like that. After working on Crash, though, uh, I kind of expect to uh, get a higher jump from holding the button down. Yeah. Oh, oh I waited too long. There? Okay. Gotcha. I see. I understand what's going on now. What happened? It. I waited too long because I was just. I was just scooping around. This is good for just. This is cool. This kind of feels Mario like. Like, uh, uh, you know, it would, it would obviously look different, but uh, it seems like the sort of thing you'd do in a, a Mario game, yeah. like that kind of bouncy. Uh, and it actually gave me a use to bring out the blaster again. I actually brought it out. It's not obsolete. No. 
But yeah, also just to wrap this up and not to linger on this point for too much longer, and actually related to the thing that I just said, you already have so much choice in terms of like your weapon selection. Mm -hmm. To add a character choice on top of that is a lot. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. in addition to all your weapon and arsenal choices, now that also has to reflect with your character choice. It's just like, man, that's a lot to bring into, uh, bring into, bring into the game. Yeah, and you know, if that's what you decided you wanted the game to be about, then you would, you would make those trade-offs. Uh, but it would be, it would feel very different. Right. And I guess, yeah, it's really just. Do we want it to, in what ways do we want it to feel different for this game we're making right now is always the question you have to ask along with you know like how many resources do we have to put into this uh you know like there's just uh, uh it what it comes down to is not do we have time for this or not necessarily it's it's also uh does this fit in with how we want the game to be Right. It's all yours, Glitch. But yeah, that was a very long aside, but I thought it was an interesting, uh, interesting thing that I remember seeing on uh, on the early reviews. That as I play more, I don't really find myself wanting that. To yeah. be honest, like, I think, I think again, not to relitigate everything that we just said, but I'm happy with just ratchet gameplay. Um, and that's kind of what I wanted here. So I don't. I definitely don't find myself really wanting that. But yeah, me I, too. That was an interesting comment. Like there's there's definitely like there's a there is a ratchet experience that I really like playing, and that that's what I wanted from this game, and that's what this is. Uh, so it's uh, uh, it isn't something I ever thought. I never thought to myself, oh, I really wish that these two controlled differently. Or that they had different weapon sets or something. Because also, like, like let's say the difference was there was, uh, you know, you didn't have the same weapons, right? Uh, then it's a whole thing about, like, uh, which weapons am I upgrading and making sure, you know, like, you, you have two different economies operating at that point. Right. Uh, and just to reiterate, it's not that that's impossible, but it's just changing... It's changing everything else that has to accommodate it. Right. 